so in part five, we're going to go through the recap of all of the, the previous parts and we're going to give the final delivery of the last section, right? There's the minimum melting characteristic, um, which is represented by this solid line right here. That's the minimum melting. And then there's the total cl clearing characteristic, which is uh, defined by this hash line right here. So the more the current, the less the time that the cable can withstand. That's the I squared T curve. So the difference here is that full load amps is dependent on load and cable opacity is dependent on the cable's uh, current carrying capacity. So here's our cable damage curve, right? And so you can see that the breaker is, is at the left of this curve, right? And it'll operate before we get to this region. If this curve was to the left, or below the overlapping curve, then we may have higher chances of nuisance tripping. And so here's the damage curve of the transformer. It's based off of this guide, this IEEE guide, and it considers there's there's uh, the most thermal, there's a thermal cap capability of the transformer as well as this notch here, and this represents the mechanical capability of, of the transformer. So therefore, a breaker curve is supposed to be to the left of a withstand curve and not overlap it so that the transformer is completely protected from all values of current 